He asked me if I'm a messenger. First of all, he doesn't even understand the meaning of a messenger. Right? He doesn't understand the meaning of a messenger. According to sectarians, being a messenger is being a prophet. According to them. Even in their hadith book, they say every messenger is a prophet. Which is, first of all, the biggest contradiction, again, in their understanding. If every messenger is a prophet, tell them, how will they explain chapter 22, verse 75? Quran chapter 22 verse 75 God says Allah yastafi ah yastafi min al malaikati rusulan wa min al nas God chooses among the angels ah he chooses among the angels messengers and among the people so among people they are messengers and among angels they are messengers so if you say every messenger is a prophet I'm waiting to see an angel prophet hmm I checked the Quran, it doesn't say there's an angel prophet. Mm. Sectarians, you lack logic. Your common sense is not working. Do you get the point? Yes, Brother Hamza, yes, that's right. Aha. Uh -huh. Of course, God keeps transmitting. The message keeps going on. You understand? So, he, the, the, the questioner was asking me, are you a messenger? So instead of giving him a direct answer, because his question is a contradictive statement, because he is asking me from the, his point of view, when, he, when a sectarian says, are you a messenger? He's tagging you as a prophet. That is the problem. So when he asked me that direct question, I cannot say yes or no. Because where, what he, from where he is asking me the question, his uh, lane of questioning is already totally wrong. So I need to correct that. So I ask him, what is the duty of a messenger? We need to first understand what a messenger is. Do you get my point? For instance, if you take chapter 5, verse 67, God was telling the prophet, he says, eh, sorry, he's telling the messenger in that verse, Ya ayyuwa rasul, ballig ma unzila ilayka mi rabbika. Then he says, wa illam taf alu. Eh, salam, DMX. Ismaila Yusuf. Ah, fa illam taf alu. He says, oh, you the messenger, you the messenger. Remember, the messenger was also acting as a prophet, but in a different level. Not at the same time, different levels. For instance, I can be a teacher and I can be a father at the same time and I can be a salesman at the same time. Yes, I can have three duties to do. Do you get my point? Or I can be a police officer at the same time, if I want. But when you are told, go to the police officer, you don't need to go to my house as a father when I'm with my kids. Go to the police officer, which means you have to meet me when I'm on duty as a police. Not when I'm on duty as a father. Do you get my point? So reasoning is, is, is behind for sectarians. The moment you choose to be a sectarian, reasoning is out of equation. You don't think outside the box anymore. You only think inside the box. So you follow orders directly from what? The sectarian leaders you have put across. That's the problem. So now God says, oh, you the messenger, deliver what has been revealed to you, sent down to you. If you do not, then you have not delivered his messages. So which means since he has been called a messenger, listen, when you are dealing with the verse, always deal with the subject. After the subject, deal with the context. After the contest, deal with the content itself, which is the message. So the subject is the messenger. So when God mentioned the messenger, the messenger is now going to detect the context of the verse for you. So then he says, deliver what has been revealed to you from your Lord. Then he says, and if you do not. So since he, the subject is the messenger, we have to stick with the subject. Don't deviate from the subject. The subject will tell you the context of the verse. So the subject is the messenger. So now the messenger, he's being told to deliver a message. What does a, mess a messenger does? What is the duty of a messenger? Chapter 64, verse 12. He says, The duty, there is nothing upon the messenger except to deliver a clear message. That is it. To deliver a clear notification. So God says, deliver what has been revealed to you from your Lord. And if you do not, then you have not delivered his message. Mind you, God didn't say, oh, you the prophet. Instead, oh, you the messenger, which means he is on the duty of his messengership. Do you see the point?
especially 28-47. Yes, messengers come, they bring the verses of God so that people can follow the verses of God. It is not about following somebody's opinion. <laughs> For instance, Prophet Muhammad chapter 5 verse 67, he acting as a messenger, imagine him coming and he'll put the Quran aside and he will tell you, follow my sunnah, do this way, this way, do this that way. Uh, you have to pray five times. You have to, when you go to do the washing, you have to wash 10 times here, 10 times here. What, what is this? What is this? So now, to understand the position of a messenger, when we go to chapter 33, verse 39, this is what God says concerning messengers. He says, Allazina yuballiguna risalati Allahi wa yakshawnahu wa la yakshawna ahada illa Allah wa kafa billahi hasiba. He says, those who deliver the messages of God and fear him, when you, when you say fear him, this is the sign of respect, not fear in terms of running away. That's why God says in chapter 20, verse 2 to verse 3, Ma anzadna alayka al-Qur'an illa tazikiratan liman yaksha. The word yaksha there, that act of fear is not like you are scared of God. It is act of respect. So now God says, Wakafa billahi hasiba, and God is sufficient as a what? Rukona who recalls things, bring things into memory. So now, if you deliver the message of God, I'm going to give you a simple example. Ladies and gentlemen, help me out. Let's sort out the meaning of a messenger. I have the messages of God here. This is the book of God, Quran, right? Now, the verses which are numbered, the one, two, three numbered ones, those are the words of God. When you open, for instance, this book here, in the beginning here, The description you see here, this is not a word of God. This is only a title to explain it. So this is not a word of God. But when you take the Quran, the verses you are seeing in Arabic here, this is the words of God. Then the ones you see here written here, they are the translation and the transliteration. Right? Good. Now, so now when I come to the people, what I do is, I read the verses of God to you, then I give you the interpretation of the verses. That is in the language that people must understand the word. There is no way we can understand a dialogue or a discussion without interpreting a dialogue. For instance, I give an example. When you go to chapter 18, verse 65, and read to verse 82, when Moses went to meet the servant of God, uh, who was given knowledge of the unseen, and he, he has to explain things to Moses. You can see the interpretation he was giving Moses was the what? Interpretation of the unseen knowledge that Moses didn't have at that time. So what, what did he have to do? He has to interpret, interpret what, had, what had happened. Because Moses would never understand if he doesn't interpret for him. I hope you get my point. So certain things happen around us or certain languages come so that they can be interpreted for others to understand what is being said here. So, for instance, if right now I should be speaking Finnish language to my kids, most of you will know, have no idea what I just said to my kids. So, what do you need to know now? So, I need to tell you, oh, I just said this to my son or that to my son. But when it comes to the messages of God, you need people who are purified, who, need, who are pure in the heart that can give you precisely what God is saying. And this is what I try my best always to do for the people. You understand? You bring the words out and give it out there to the people. Now, when you give it out there to the people, then you call for challenge. Because God says in chapter 25, verse 33, They will not come to you with an instance, with a case, with an argument, with an example, anything. We have brought you the truth and best in what? Commentary, explanation. So if you have the truth, and you put the challenge out there. Why, why afraid somebody will challenge you to the truth you are speaking? And if you know you don't have the truth, why, why come out there to assume the truth? You don't assume. If it's an assumption, stay home and, and, and be to yourself. If it is the truth, come out and speak. But be willing to be challenged so that you prove. So that is what Moses did when he said God sent him. And he has been given a sign to bring to the uh, Pharaoh. What did Pharaoh say? I will arrange my magicians to face you. 
So what did Moses have to do? He have to follow the challenge. Somebody will tell you, oh no, in Islam you don't need to do challenge, you are ignorant. Simple. In Islam, challenge is allowed. You need to challenge people and let them challenge you. This is how the truth can be sorted out. Do you, do you get, I hope you get my point. So Moses has to go and had to go and challenge Pharaoh, face the magicians in order to prove that the truth will always conquer falsehood. So God says in chapter 17, verse well, 80 to 81, Ja al haq wa zahak al batil in the batil akena zawuka. The truth has come and it will wipe out the falsehood. Falsehood can never stand. It has to be wiped out. Wiped out. Do you see my point? Now, so now we go back to the equation. Chapter 7 verse 35 clearly tells us concerning when messengers come among people. The guy asked me if I'm a messenger. Because he doesn't understand the notion of a messenger. He thinks every messenger is a prophet. So that notion is falsehood in the first place. So if I should answer him yes or no, I will contradict myself whilst giving him the answer. So I need to put things are right by letting people understand what a messenger is. It's simply to deliver the messages of God. So God says in chapter 7 verse 35, remember, Prophet Muhammad brought this Quran, right? He brought it as a messenger, right? Now, since he brought the book, inside the book, God is going to talk about the messengers who are coming to the people. And this is what he said. Ya, ya, ya badi Adama. Imma yati yannakum rusulu minkum yakusuna alaykum ayati famani taka wa aslaha fala khawfun alayhim wala hum yazanun. He says, oh children of Adam, you can see that God is speaking to children of Adam, human beings in the Quran. In the Quran. The same Quran Prophet Muhammad brought. Now where he see is dead and gone, right? So let's assume it was his time that he was telling people this. So now listen what he said. Oh children of Adam. Whenever or if, listen carefully, whenever or if messengers among you come to you, narrating to you my verses, that is the verses of God, whoever would what? Be pious. Wa aslaha, to reform. Huh? Salaha, it means to improve on yourself, to be better. Then fala haufun alayhim. They will not have any fear on them. Wala hum yazanun, nor will they grieve. So now, when messengers come, whenever messengers come, what is the duty of a messenger? For you, the intellectual person, to know the criteria of a messenger, a messenger is only to deliver the messages of God. A sectarian will say, Are you just saying the messenger prophet was a male man? We are not talking about the prophet, we are talking about the messenger. You see how difficult it is to deal with ignorant people? They don't know how to differentiate the jobs, the titles of a person. Do you get my point? So now we are support a messenger is supposed to deliver a message of God. Now this is what God was asking. Chapter 16 verse 35. God clearly says. He's asking us a question. Fahal ala rusul illa balagu mubin. Is there anything upon the messengers that said delivering the clear notification? Is there any other thing? God is asking us. Fahal uh, is there upon the messengers except delivering the clear notification is is there anything that's the question god is asking us a sectarian will tell you no 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 hey, the messenger is a, do, look even if you quote chapter 62 verse 2 to me and you tell me who it is still delivering the message of god he came to deliver that is still the delivery the message of god because if i'm teaching you i'm still delivering you something because I'm teaching you that thing, still it's a delivery. Do you get my point? Now, a shallow-minded person thought when we say the messenger's duty is only to deliver the message, it means he brought it as a parcel man, like a UPS, a USPS, or let's say FedEx, or DHL. Just brought it and put it in your room side, in your box, and, <laughs> and go. That's what they think. When we say we are following only the messenger, they don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> now, so now, so to be a messenger, it has nothing to do with being a prophet. You can be a messenger so far as you are delivering the messages of God. So this is the book of God. If I'm reading the verses of God to you, that makes me a messenger because it is the verses of God. And now I'm delivering it to the people. How will you describe me? I don't get it. How, how will you describe me? I'm delivering the messages of God to the people. 
do I need to be called anything other than a messenger? I'm a messenger because a message is here. A message is in the book and I'm delivering it to the people. That makes me a messenger. So God says, when messengers come among you, narrating to you my verses, he said, my verses, that person, me, I'm not here to give you my opinions. I open the book of God and I give you the verses of God. That's what I'm here to do. And God says, if you want to analyze that what a messenger is saying is not from God, what did he say? Because if Brother Shribe says he's giving you messages from the Quran, yours, you the intellectual person out there, is to sit down and contemplate the message Brother Shribe is delivering to you. In case you find contradictions inside that message, then that particular contradiction, that message is not from God. Do you see how it goes? Good. And by the way, chapter 39, verse 71 to verse 73 tells you clearly on the day of judgment, God will question people about messengers not coming among them. He will say, did messengers not come to you, narrated to you the verses of God? You see the detail of a messenger to deliver the message of God. So narrating the verses of God to the people. That is all. That's a messenger. Mommy. That's right. Our job is what? Give the message. That's it. We're messengers. We're messengers. And we try our best to deliver it in the best way. And, and then what the people do with the message after they get it, it's up to them. So that's pretty much it.